yet, but you're right. Okay. It's like it's steamy still. out here, right? Um, yes, it's, it's Walkabout Wednesday, and we are doing it this evening because I got my days mixed up and already posted a video of our extreme quarantine makeover. So didn't want to miss out on the on the walkabout. So got the idea to to just do it live after dinner. So here we are. This is a beautiful time of the day to be out in the garden. Huh, Bentley? Yes. Hello from Sacramento. Cruising Angel, you're the first person. It's just you and me and Hannah and Bentley. And 44 other people. And 44 other people. <laughs> and 53 other people. Okay, all right. Y'all are here. That's so great. Matthew Ryan wants to know if your bougainvillea ever stops flowering. You know, Matthew, it's so funny about the bougainvillea because I wanted to get artsy-fartsy and bring in more than one variety. So I got three different kinds, and they don't go off at the same time. So the one that you'll see in bloom tonight is the Barbara Karsh. And yeah, pretty much year-round. The other two, not so much. So... Hi, Elizabeth Carlson. Thank you so much for joining my channel and, and offering your support. I appreciate it. Um, we, uh, one of you actually gave me the idea to offer maintenance to the neighbor as a housewarming gift. And, you know, they've been in that house for a minute and we haven't connected and they don't know me from Adam. And, you know, it's a quarantine and a pan, pan what is it called? A pandemic. And we're, you know, it's, you just don't go banging on people's doors. But I really wanted to sink my teeth into that installation. So I finally got the nerve up and I did it. And they are the nicest people. Um, it's Luis and Denise. And they are following on YouTube now and are just really starting to get excited about their yard. And it's just, oh, it's just very, very great. And I'm so good. I'm so glad that I took the time to introduce myself. And so now in the mornings, you know, we wave at each other and it's just, it's just all good. So if you don't know your neighbors, try. Hi, Allison. Hi, Allison. <laughs> yeah, she probably said hi to you, Hannah. Okay, so anywho, um, I want to shout out Carol Kent and Susan Kirby, uh, two of my joiners and my members, and say thank you very much uh, for your support. And basically what you guys are going to be seeing is a, you know, kind of a real-time succulent tip of the day. This is, this is how we do it, pretty much all in one take. And in Walkabout Wednesday, we kind of go around and look at things that we've worked on during quarantine to see how they're coming along. So since we're right here, what time is it? What time is it? It's, seven. it's seven. Yeah. PM. PM. Yeah. Um, the little tool, the little uh, fishing tackle box is still looking very lively. Now, remember, here in San Diego, it got really cold and really rainy. And then it got really hot and it was hot for about three days in a row. And by hot, I mean in the 80s, which is a lot for us, particularly at this time of the year. So you are going to see some plants during our walkabout that are showing signs of stress from that heat. Some of them from going from the cold to the heat that are divas and they're just pouting and they're just so upset. So anyway, this, however, despite the fact that it gets a lot of sun in the afternoon, has held up beautifully. Now our little spoon and our jewelry, this, I'm such a mean succulent mom. I mean, these just get blasted every day with the sun. I, it's just so sad, but look, I mean, they, they don't look a hundred percent, but they don't look that bad either considering how long they have been glued onto that spoon and that bracelet and how hot it's been. I'm actually pretty happy. This little, crest this little mertillo cactus crest that we discovered was rotten and i popped it in here as the cutting is drying off really really nicely and i'm very very confident that this is going to reroot and just be very very healthy and happy in its adorable little pot so anywho moving on i have the most exciting thing to show you Mama has given birth to like 20 babies.
It's my Trichoceros hybrid. Isn't that beyond? I mean, now somebody asked me, why are your cactus in the shade? You know, why aren't your cactus in the sun? Well, this is, as you know, Bentley's toilet right here. This is also our guest room. And so I wanted it to look nice, you know, I wanted it to look nice out the window. And I also wanted to display my pointy things where my grandkids wouldn't have such risk of bumping into them. So that's kind of the reason why the sharp and pointy things are back here. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that it's mostly shady. Look at the blooms on that. And I mean, she's got more buds. And look at those little babies down here. I mean, can you stand that? Honestly, if this was the only plant I had, I would be a happy camper. Unbelievable. Do you ever have any reflective burns from your gorgeous glass stones as decorations? Hmm. I don't think so. I mean, none that I've... Do oh, glass... I'm sorry. Do I ever have any reflective burns from my glass stones that I use? Like um, like this, I would guess uh, you would be thinking, or, or the fire glass. Uh, not that I have noticed. So, you know, I want to say no, but I can understand why that would be an issue. Some of my things, you know, like my... Uh, for Bessie I spiralis, I moved down to the ground there and put it in the shade because see how it's looking a little bit yellow? I thought that that might be, you know, stress. Well, obviously it's stress, but it might be from the, from the sun. So I'm just giving it a rest over there in the corner. And some of you have asked me to do an actual video on these living stones. And I, you know, the only thing I can tell you is don't water them. That's really all I've got. I don't know a whole lot about these plants. I actually put this little arrangement together for my kids, for my um, son and daughter-in-law that live in LA, for their housewarming. I know I am so generous. <laughs> so what a lame gift. And it's not like it's there, but then I went off and forgot it. So um, I just thought this would be something that they could put in the house and forget about and enjoy. So, you know, we talked last week about there being some little babies yeah, you can still, they haven't really done much since last week, but there they are. Someone said they think that this is pre-recorded. Nope, this is live. This is not pre-recorded. Okay. Some, sometimes it's hard for this woman right here to answer questions because she talks so much. True, I do. <laughs> yeah. I, I like to hear myself talk. It's hard to get a word in edgewise. edgewise. Oh, and this, this honeysuckle. What a spectacular bloom. This and the smell of citrus are two of my absolute favorite things. Then we have our, our leaf nursery. And they're looking lively. Some of these are starting to really long. Others are not so much. But I'm not ready to give up on them yet. So how do you avoid losing leaves on donkey tails? Well, I don't avoid it. It happens. It does. You know, like on this one, this is a good example. This has been here for probably two years. And you can see where it has lost leaves, where it's stemmy. And I don't mind that really at all. I'm not, I'm not concerned about that. If I was, I would take the stems and trim them back like so it's just a delicate succulent also so sometimes when you touch it leaves will fall off and just oh no i dropped my clippers uh yeah and just stick it in here like this and what succulents survive best in zone seven and eight this there you go um that's what i would do if that were bothering me. But yeah, this, this in your zone seven, eight question, I'll get to that. But yeah, this is kind of a, a tender one. But remember, if your leaves are falling off of your plants, that may very well be because it's getting too much to drink or it got hammered by a lot of water. That's one of the symptoms of pre-rot is leaves just abandoning the plant. And as we go, you know, plants that are good for zone seven, eight, zone seven and eight means that you get some hard freeze. So 
the plant has to be hardy. Some cactus are hardy. Some agaves are hardy. Um, what I would suggest that you do is get with your local plant society and or your local nursery and, and ask. I'm not living in zone seven or eight. It's, it's trickier for me. And I feel uncomfortable making recommendations because I would have no idea what I'm really talking about. And as you know, all of my information is experiential. This Brugmansia angel trumpet is so heavy with bloom. It's crazy heavy. Look how that thing is starting to lean over toward the pond. I will show you when this comes out in full bloom, I'll be sure to let you guys know and, and we'll shoot a little video. Um, let's see. Oh, here's a good one. Elf and thyme. I love the smell of elf and thyme. And this does really, really well in the winter here. Yeah. But as soon as it gets hot, it just dies. So, you know, what I'm going to do with this, because I'm not going to, I'm not going to put up with that. I will be cutting, it smells like 7-Up Popsicles too. I will be cutting this out. And what happens is it comes back every year. So no worries. And you're probably thinking, well, now you've just got a big gaping wound. No, friends, you know that I'm not going to tolerate that. I'll figure out something to put in there. Thank you, Bentley. You're so helpful. Um, is going in and out. Okay. Why do you think that is? I'm very close. Okay, so you know now what I'll be doing and are, those are what? Oh, these are. Uh, no, they're not. Uh, these clippers are. I think they're just Coronas. They're just cheapos. Um, I do recommend Falcos, though. They are the Cadillac of, of uh, clippers. So, yeah, this is a really hot spot right here. And eventually, probably, I would think, but for now, in this little etch of lightly, you know, I suppose if that happened to the entire plant, it would probably rot and be toast. And this little kiwi, you know, looks pretty fried. If you wanted, could you... Like take it out and put it somewhere with more protection? Absolutely. If I, you know, if I was concerned about it, I would, I would probably harden that thing off in the shade uh, and wait until it started to root before I planted it back in the ground. Once again, we're not used to getting, you know, 80s in April in San Diego. So I just thought this was kind of neat, um, an opportunity to show you what you guys probably are experiencing in other the country that I never do experience. Um, everything in here looks okay. My Aluaudia Procera is freaking out. Um, and I do believe that in response to the cold that we got and then the hot that we got and the rain. And it's just, it's bipolar and it doesn't know what to do. So the worst thing that I can do right now is water this. Anytime you plant actively stressed, it means it's going into a dormant state. That's why the leaves are turning brown and yellow and falling off. Water and nutrients aren't, um, you know, aren't forcing through the... It was going out. Uh, well, technical difficulties. <laughs> I took the mic out, but we're going to put it back in. Okay. Mic got, was taken out, we're going to put it back in. But if you, can, if you guys can hear me, um, you know, this, this is not the time to water this plant. Remember, too, that your succulents have water. There's water in here, lots of it. So it is not in any danger of dying from lack of water. Can you hear? Oh, look, it's Greg. Oh. The cat, the cat. got out. Hi. Okay, everybody can hear. They, they can? Hear. Yes. Now, check this out. This is something new in the garden. My dear friend, and I mean that as in all sincerity, Susan Ock, 
brought me over a bunch of pots to play with. Uh, she left them on my courtyard. We practiced social distancing. It was all very, very proper. Um, but I wanted to make sure that I had plenty of content for all of you. So she was gracious enough to bring over some pots. And she also brought me this, this Lactie Cristata cutting, which I staged in this pot. Now, Susan is amazing. And I have such respect and admiration for her work. Can you she turn it? does not use... Well, you can go onto her website at Susan Auch, A A C H Ceramics.com. She's local here in San Diego. She delivers all over the world. Is she offering a promo code? And if you're <laughs> interested in purchasing any of her fantastic pots, this is so cute. You type in the code I Love Laura, all in caps, and get 15% off at checkout. So that's. That's really, really sweet. She's such a lovely person. And her work just, it speaks to me. There's such an energy in this that it almost vibrates. You know, I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm crazy, but really, I just think that this, her work evokes so much emotion in me. And I can't recommend her stuff enough. So again, anything on her website uh, between now and May 15th, 15% off at Susan Ock, A A C H ceramics.com. Uh, promo code all caps I love Laura. So, yeah, some shout out and some love. Sorry. To Susan. There's the kitty. He's an indoor cat. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, we another, love Susan. Sorry. Another thing that's going to be going south in S Susan Ock Ceramics. Yes. Susan A A C H. Ceramics. Ceramics.com. Okay. So gorge. Uh, this sweet alyssum um, is gorgeous in the winter and early spring, and it is going to be going south here pretty soon. So when it starts to get really leggy and it loses a lot of its bloom, I just pull it out by the roots. We can do a video on it. Yeah, I think I've done a video on it, but I pull it out like this. I shake out the seeds and then I pitch it. And then every year I get a brand new crop of, of this Easter bonnet alyssum, which is so cute. You know, this is so indicative of San Diego here, my microclimate. This is superbum and it looks like somebody stepped on it at some point. Look at that. I don't know how long this has been laying there, but I guarantee you it's been a minute. Look at that. And then it looks like this branch had broken off too. And look at all of the little rosettes on that branch. I think that Superba might be a really good one to leaf propagate with too, if you've got it. I am just really impressed with how tough that plant is. Oh this is goodness. about to unravel another leaf. Oh yes, unfurl. Unfurl. Yes. Look at, well, remember, I cut the head off of our agave um, variegata. variegata, attenuata variegata. And when you do that, you know, that can often really encourage the mom to get going and to pick up the pace in terms of her life cycle. But she has given me a number of beautiful pups. So not terribly concerned about that. Update on our doves. They abandoned their nest over in the gutters, but we saw them up here in the wisteria rattling around. Um, so I don't know, you know, if they're going to nest up there or not, but um, we have, I was excited to see them over the weekend. We have another question. Yes. Um, how do you deal with teeny tiny thorn removal? Oh, glockids? How do you deal with teeny tiny thorn removal? with tape is the best way to get those you know those little airborne glockets out any kind of tape you know scotch so. tape duct tape whatever just put it on and rip it off we have done that so many times on job sites when someone steps into you know like an apuntia for example so that's how you do that and the fountain remember we talked about this i'm not going to be setting up a 
umbrella here this year. Um, every year that I've had this, I've tried to keep it shaded in the summer and it's so ridiculous. Mm -mm. I was just trying to protect my string of pearls. So what I did, you know, oh, we didn't check on that too, but there's really not a whole lot to see. You know, last week I took my string of pearls and I stuck them in the gutters over there and I just set a rock on them to hold them steady. They're just sitting there being fine, but I just cut them back. I didn't remove them, but I cut them back hard. And I'm really encouraging this burrow tail instead because I think it's a much tougher plant. This palico kitten, you know, we'll see how it goes. But I've been looking at this fountain a lot this week. And what I'm gonna do when, it, when this quarantine is over and I can get out and, you know, I get back to work and I can shop is I'm gonna put some larger plants in here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take out some of the smaller fussy things and put in more statement plants. I think it's gonna be a better look long term than all of that little stuff. Because as soon as the summer hits, this thing is gonna look rangy and not great. Do you ever um, give your climbing roses, like, do you ever cut them back hard? Oh, the roses, my Eden climbers. Kind of proud of these. Um, you will notice that my Eden climbers are in boxes. These boxes are lined with hardware cloth on the bottom. And this is the second go round with the roses because my dear voles that we have took every single one of them out within a couple weeks of planting. And these weren't cheap. So I had Greg build me these above ground boxes, put the hardware cloth on the bottom. And hardware cloth is like chicken wire. It comes in different gauges. You can get it at the home store. It's just a little tougher and stronger and has more oomph than, heart, than um, chicken wire. And what I do with these climbers is I cut them back by about a quarter every winter in January, just about 25% because they are climbing roses. And I really want to encourage them to climb. I actually have trained them onto this fence with a staple gun. Um, I don't, I'm not a rose person. I don't know, you know, if I should do that or not, but that's what I've always done. As you can see, they're beautiful and they are just, just getting ready to go off. I am so excited about these roses. What about, um, what about your uh, aloe there? It's oh, looking yes, great. and then the aloe, the veombe that we put in here, what was it? It's been probably a couple of weeks. It's getting far more color. Look at all the sunburn too on the down here oh on this stuff yeah here's sunburn here on this saonium leaf that's all sunburn you know no biggie mm -hmm. not gonna not worry about it oh look at the sunburn on this yeah you po guys probably know what i'm talking about right and here's that little um attenuata variegata one of the babies it's he actually holding up pretty darn well <laughs> isn't it how yeah. how do you keep your aonium so low? She cuts their heads off. Yep, <laughs> I uh, I decide. You are the daddy of these plants. So if you don't like it high, cut it off and stick it back in the ground. I like to keep them at different heights. And these big dinner plate aeoniums are so easy to work with. Pull it out of the ground, cut off its head, and stick it back. This, I believe, is on a very long stem. Mm -hmm. Wasn't that the story yeah. on this one? So I just let it ride. But how, I am not afraid. How often are you, out, are you out here cleaning up your detritus? Oh my gosh, every spare minute while in quarantine, I, you know, have just been out here for hours picking up little weeds and, and little leaves. I happen to enjoy doing that though, so it's not a burden for me. I just usually don't have the kind of time uh, that I've had recently. So yes, I spend a lot of time on weed removal and detritus, but like I said, it's better than sitting on my butt in front of the TV, that's for darn sure. Remember this? Remember the shell that we planted out with this Tillandsia and some cuttings and some, and some leftover, just leftover stuff that I found I'm really, really pleased with how this looks. This looks so great. And our little Aeonium Sunburst, you guys, I don't know if they're gonna make it. Look at that. I mean, they got harshed. Now yes. that, that Sunburn, that's bad. 
um, I should have tucked them further underneath the raised bed. I'm not ready to give up on them, but they look so gross. But okay, Mama. <laughs> we'll keep we'll keep track. Has this um, aloe rooted yet? That was a question. Let's see. I doubt it. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll take a look. And then what succulents do you recommend for privacy? If any. Not yet. Nope. Looks good though. Yeah, no rot. But yeah, it'll probably be a couple more weeks before this starts throwing off any roots. And as far as privacy goes, there aren't really any that I can think of that I would recommend in the succulent family. Petalanthus bracteus grows kind of like, uh, it looks kind of like bamboo, although it doesn't run like bamboo, but it drops its leaves in the winter. So yeah, um, that's a good question. And maybe somebody in the comments can help out if they've had any luck or success. Let's check out that Cameronii too. The Cameronii, yes, turning more red. Look at that. Let's see if it's thrown off any roots. Nope, no roots yet. And see this leaf here? Ish. Yeah, that leaf has rotted. See, it's so, <laughs> well, you can just clearly see that, right? Gross. No <laughs> big deal. Just taking that off hasn't spread this is yeah that's fine it's still hard and you know what if this gets mushy and soft i'll just trim the soft part off until i get to healthy flesh but i'm not watering this bed and the soil's dry so i'm not worried about it but we'll check in we'll check in this um sunburst crest is looking fantastic mm -hmm. i'm very very pleased with that and my little arrangement up here with a little cactus in it these Rubra tinctum are blooming, and this is a monocarpic plant. So you can see that where it's flowered. What happens? What would it look like if we, let's just say that the flower finished and we trimmed the flower off? Then what? Can you live with that? Yeah. No, no, you can't. You can't. You can't live with that. That's ugly. I don't like that. So, um, when I have a root retinctum bloom out, I take it all the way back to the stem because I don't like looking at that. If I cut it back lower, then it'll branch out from beneath the cut. And, but it won't look bad. Okay, uh-oh, look here. Oh no, my blue glow. Oh no, that's uh, a little bit of sunburn right there on my gorgeous blue glow. That makes me very sad. Um, you moved back the fence. Yes, Greg MacGyvered the trellis, and it is now attached over here. So this has opened up this real estate. Now, I know I told you guys that I was going to turn this into a garden of death. I'm not. I'm not. Now that I've got that thing moved, clearly what I see needs to happen is this bed just needs to be expanded. What I have here are my specimen agaves. And of course my gutters and I want to carry that all the way through so I will be putting up as soon as I'm able I'm going to be putting up more rows of gutters and finding more agaves that I don't have yet to plant here it's going to be so amazing so, people are worried about the stay tuned the pink jasmine what about the that was jasmine? on the trellis what about it I took it out <laughs> I just got rid of it. It's like a weed. Um, no big deal. It's a $10 plant at Home Depot. No. I can go get another. Yeah, it's not a big deal. Um, these are Garden of Death plants. These are project leftovers. Um, you know, we'll see if I, you know, if I, when I start working again, I might fold these into the design. Um, these peri, I remember, they sunburned about a year ago, and I've been trying to shade those uh, until they grow out of the sunburn and throw off new leaves. This is our mama, varig um, agave variegata attenuata. Remember, we held on to her to see if she would do anything, 
Ugh, I don't know, guys. It's starting to feel this trunk. It's desiccating. I mean, I can I could peel this outer bark off. This is not good. Yeah. So, um, you know, this is this is the trunk and all of the root system, and this is not this is not looking or feeling great. But I'm not going to give up on it yet. We're going to hang in there a little bit. A little bit longer. Should we check out the gutters on the other side? Yeah, let's do it. Do you have any string of hearts? You know, I don't. I don't have. I did at one point and they died. I love string of hearts though. That is the sweetest little plant. I'd love to get another one of those. And all of the plants, the first thing that we did in the, the backyard ren reno was pull out all of the stuff back there and reset it. And it's looking really good. I don't see anything that is in trouble or damaged outside of a little bit of snail damage. And look at my sticks on fire. My Tirucali up there. Isn't that the most stunning color? And I appreciate so much all of you voting on whether or not I should put the sticks on fire back because the neighbors. Um, stay tuned. It was a lot closer of a race than we were anticipating it. Yeah, it was. I, I was thinking that you'd all kind of be of one mind, but the, the group was a little bit split. And you, you know what, you guys are so smart. I mean, you had some really, really solid ideas. You didn't just say, get rid of it or keep it you gave me lots of ideas and suggestions for where to put it or what to put in its place and i really appreciate that it was really insightful thank you okay can a denium grow out here in our climate yes yes a denium can absolutely grow in our climate i just don't have them available at my suppliers for whatever reason so i don't use that plant um, you can see this rock i stuck the rock to hold the string of pearls in place. These are just cuttings so that they wouldn't fall out. And what I'm hoping that basically they're sitting right on top of the soil and I'm hoping that they will root. And so far, you know, some of them look a little rough, but for the most part, I'm really happy with these. They don't look too bad. They do get lots of shade back here, but it, <laughs> Well, he almost is, peed on my foot. Thank you, Bentley, for being a good boy. Um, you know, it's still a crap shoot. <laughs> crap shoot. Because yeah. these, you know, I don't know if they'll take. I don't, it's just a really difficult time, you know, with it getting hotter and warmer. And um, we'll just see, you know, it was an experiment and we'll see. But that's that's that right now. Ew. She hasn't ever um, tried to grow cacti or succulents from seed. Yes, I do not have the patience. The closest thing I've ever come to growing anything from seed is this. With my little babies, <laughs> which I am pretty sure. I know that this, uh, this little stone, I know it bloomed last year. And I think possibly a seed may have, may have dropped there. That's the closest I have ever come. That was all you, Mom. Say what? All, that was all you. What? That seedling. Yeah, right. That was all me. I did that. Yeah, I did that. Um, all right. Okay. Look at, look at Bentley. Look what a tough guy he is. Who is it? Look at that. Isn't he just so scary? He is such a baby. <laughs> yeah, he's the biggest baby. Oh, God. He is so funny. He's so cute. All right. It's getting dark. Do you have any more announcements? Do I? Do I have any announcements? I don't know. <laughs> what announcements do I have? What's your favorite part of your garden and where is it? You know, my favorite, gosh, that's such a, you know, it depends on the time of year. Absolutely. It depends on the time of year. You know, when, when the roses are all in bloom, you know, I like to sit over there. Um, when the honeysuckle is in bloom and the brugmansia is going off, I like to sit over there. I think the most important thing to do, whether you have a big yard or a small yard or no yard, 
is to create some sort of a shrine, some sort of an altar, some sort of a, a place or a vignette that you can just appreciate. And if it isn't looking its best due to the time of the year or what, for whatever reason, change it out so that you always have something to look at that you can appreciate and enjoy. Who is Bentley's favorite human? I think it's me. Because I give Hannah him the best scratches. That Bentley likes her best. And she's probably right. He adores her because she gives him these really great scratches. But honestly, I think that if it my really dad. came down to it, it would be Greg. Yeah. Greg bonded with him when he was a really, really small puppy. He would come out, you know, deal with it. Uh, and Bentley never forgot that. So Bentley is definitely dad's favorite. Yeah, Bentley. And I'm the one that walks him every single day. And I, frankly, spend the most time with him. And he likes me <laughs> just fine. But, like I said, I think Daddy, or Greg, is absolutely his favorite. And what's your favorite succulent at the moment? Because I'm sure it changes, right? Yeah, you know, that's a good... Uh, thank you for saying that, at the moment. What am I all about right now? I said it. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, you yeah. did? Yeah. Oh, thanks. I know it's not a stationary thing. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm always, I'm always about something else. Um... I don't know. I mean, I, oh, I know what I was going to tell you guys. And this is probably why I don't know what my favorite is right now. Um, probably the, Aga the Echeveria Agavoides lipstick would be my favorite right now. It's looking so good. But I am doing my first virtual consultation with a fabulous follower in Davis, California. And she, Annette, reached out to me and said, I don't know if you do that, but I'd be really happy to be your guinea pig. And I was very scared about it because you know me, I don't draw. So I just wasn't sure how that was going to work. How was I going to walk this lady through an installation? But she was all for it. She said, I'm happy to give it a whirl. So um, I had WaterWise deliver plants all the way up in Davis. They'll Waterwise will go really, really far. So if you're interested in plants from Waterwise, message me, uh, and I'll let you know if they'll come as far as you are. Uh, you might be surprised. But Waterwise came up and delivered the most gorgeous plants, and I had her go to her local rock yard, and I through FaceTime helped her choose her rocks and boulders and top dressings, and then. What she does is she'll call me on FaceTime and we'll go over her list of chores or things to do. Then she does what I tell her to do and then she calls me back, I check her work and then you know we go on from there. But bottom line, it's going really, really well. And I'm super excited to start sharing photos. She's got the planting done and now it's time for top dressing. And when she gets all of that done, I will send you guys, or post some photos so you can see. Leo V says, when are y'all doing another 420 Hannah video? LOL. Another 420 Hannah video, probably on 420, right? The past. <laughs> so one year. Yeah, one year. <laughs> one year. It was so funny how many people that just whooshed right on by loved it. I she surprised it. me. I did not see that coming. Yeah. Every now and then I try, you know, I try to surprise you. Keep it fresh. Um, water, Waterwise doesn't ship plants via mail, but they'll deliver, right? Correct. Okay. They don't do um, mail delivery, but they will drive a giant truck up to you. Um, they go really far. I know that they go into Nevada. They go to Vegas. They go into the desert. I know they go to Davis because I just Sacramento area. Uh, so, yeah, you know, reach out to me and let me know that's a service that i provide i go and i pull plants for clients tag them and then i coordinate the shipping so that you know you're getting the best possible plants maria um bromeliads do really well in the shade mom do you have any other suggestions for shade succulents or just plants probably succulents um she has uh, aloe cameronii aloe vera and a petalanthus right now Okay, those are all great plants for the sun. <laughs> and yes, bromeliads are great. Talansias are great. Um, what else have we used that's good in the shade? We, Calanchoe orgialis can mm -hmm. do really well in the shade. 
I've had luck with Porta Lucaria in the shade. I think uh, it depends on what kind of shade we're talking about too. Is it dense, really dark, or does it get you know some indirect light? If you have any specific plant questions, you guys know to message me, right, on Instagram at Laura Love Succulents. Mm -hmm. While I'm in quarantine, I'm doing really good at keeping up with all of y'all's questions. And let's enjoy it while it lasts. Because once I go back to work, it'll be crazy and I, I won't be able to. I'm having so much fun being able to do that and you know actually watching the videos that that hannah posts and then looking <laughs> at the comments and responding to them so do you have any other things you'd like to add about virtual consultations um for people that are interested or should oh. they reach out to you privately yeah, or if you're interested in a virtual consultation if i can be of assistance to you you know since i'm so new at it what i would suggest is that you email me at design for serenity uh, at yahoo.com and say hi to Esther hi Esther I love you girl um, that's my email that's the best way to reach me <laughs> it's Alex you can also reach out through Instagram at Laura Love succulents but what I'd want to do is just talk with you first to see if we're a fit and to see if I can if I can help you um, it really does depend on what's going on and what you want me to do and, you know, as to whether or not it will be of value. So I'm taking that on a case-by-case -case basis, but I have a Vegas client. I have the, um, the lady up in Davis. I'm working with a lady locally, too, just via FaceTime, phone, um, texting back and forth. It's amazing what we can get done. Hey, Al. Anybody else got anything? It's getting dark. A, a lot of people are saying hi and that they love you. Oh, Veronica Person you. says that she loves you and she went to visit your work at Waterwise. Thanks. Um, yeah, we have a lot. It's hard to keep up sometimes. Yeah. Do you have an, an oldest plant? Like, Oh, yeah. Um, what's my oldest plant? That's, oh, well, no, not really. See, remember, I don't really collect. Well, I did. I never used to collect. I I have such a small space that I was really, really careful not to, you know, not to collect. So, pretty much everything in my garden is ten years old, um, or newer, because that's how long I have been here. So I don't. I didn't. I didn't get into succulents until about ten years ago. So that answers that. John says he loves you. I love you too, John. Hi, sweet boy. My son, John, up Love in you, Los John. Angeles. John uh, and his wife, Marianne, just had our beautiful granddaughter, Lucy, who right now, of course, we can't visit with, but we are just living for the videos that they send. In our latest video, also, I went ahead and attached a link to an older video um, that's pretty interesting. Do you want to tell them why it's interesting? Yes. Hannah found a video that we did... Three years ago, was it? Yeah. Where, it's a typical Laura video, it's kind of hard to describe because it's so random, but we start out in my front yard and I'm talking all about it. And it turns out that my yard wasn't always barrel cactus. I totally forgot the yeah. other things in my yard at one point. So that's interesting. My Aluaudia procera that's out there is like two feet tall. You know, now it's like as tall as, it's like the mad Jack and Magic Beanstalk. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> We are actually doing the installation of the neighbors down, down the street, but we walk right by the one I've been redoing right next door. It's a six and week old installation. Six yeah. In, and it looks so fresh and brand new. It is, and it, you know, we talk about it mm -hmm. in the video. We take a minute and kind of go over it. So if you're interested, if you've been following the extreme quarantine um, makeover of the neighbors over these last few days, I think you will find that to be very interesting. No contests are coming up as of right now due to everything going on with COVID. We don't really want to send things out, but we are, we have some in the works, don't we? I'm sure. Oh my gosh. Yes. I'm, you know, I am so eager to play with you guys. I want to, you know, I would send all of you plants if I could in a heartbeat. I, I mean, I, I, I'm so frustrated, but 
you know, Greg and I are really committed to staying home for as long as we possibly can. You know, many of you know uh, Greg had a cardiac arrest in August of last year, and so he's vulnerable, and this is scary, and I just don't want him out of my bubble. So trips to the post office or to go get boxes or, you know, just to do anything. We're just, you know, putting the brakes on that. We don't want to be exposed to people right now. Uh, so we aren't shipping or, you know, doing that. But yes, as soon as we are able, we will have so much fun because I just, you know, we just figured out that join button. So many of you were interested in supporting me and supporting my channel uh, financially, and I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to make that go. So my son John helped us figure that out. Shout out, shout out, shout out. Um, uh, and so that's something that I want to offer to those of you as a way to thank you too. You know, uh, some contests for members, and um, I don't know. There's just so much we can do. We're a family. Le oh. Leo V E said that I should start a, a new video gardening series where it's 420 year round. Somebody, <laughs> I know. 420 didn't hey, hey, I'm all for these suggestions. <laughs> 420 year round. <laughs> you know what? God bless. As far as I'm concerned, I mean, you go do you. We should probably get in. Yeah, it's getting, uh, it's getting very, very dark. Here, I'm gonna turn it uh, to selfie mode so you can look through. Say hi, Al. Aww. Hey, Al. hey you guys. Mm -hmm. you see your little comments. Oh, you're welcome, Ed. Oh, right here. Oh, no, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Don't be nervous. I'm not. There you go. I'm not. So you can scroll through. Oh, will Waterwise deliver to Northern Nevada? I believe they will. Somebody wants to decapitate their agave attenuate. It's kind of big. Should I put it on the shade after? Yes, absolutely. Right garage. now, put it in the garage. Um, I lost my comments. It's okay. <laughs> you just click again. I lost them. Oh, I just click again. Okay. Yeah. Put it in the garage because it will burn in at this time of the year, unless you're in Australia and you're coming into the winter months, in which case you would be fine. She's having so much fun. I can tell. Yeah. So nice yeah. Thank you. What is he yelling? What's a new succulent that I have tried out? <laughs> Probably that Lactia cristata that I showed you in the Susan Auk pot. That's that one is new to me. Okay. <laughs> Victoria says she will drive for succulents. That's great. And Althea wants to know when she can purchase some swag. Uh, yeah, that we've just kind of shut down the shop and, and everything right now. We are just we are just chilling like villain, villains. Villains, yes. Okay. All right. Yeah, I just wanted you to show your little face there. Yeah. Thanks, Han. Okay. You're welcome. So we are going to wind it up for tonight. Greg and I are watching Breaking Bad for the third time, and we are currently season, what are we, Hannah, season? You're on season... Two episodes, like, 13 or something? They just started, like, three days ago, too, so I don't know how. Uh, this is desperate times, people. Desperate times. <laughs> but um, I'm glad. I'm glad we're watching it again. I'm enjoying it. So, season three, Greg said. That's, you know, that's... <laughs> My big plans for the evening, you know. He's screaming from uh, inside. Yeah, great. Someone said to watch Ozark. They have. Oh, I have. <laughs> I challenge you to suggest a show that I have not watched. They're on, that's all they do that's all the time. All we do. They're anyway, date, yeah, period. Um, and now that we're in quarantine, I mean, it's just like times 10 with the TV. So, uh, so yeah, we are enjoying what is out there. Oh, on Apple TV... Uh, Defending Jacob. I read the book. It was phenomenal. My son, John, worked on that show as an assistant editor, too, which is why it got on my radar. And it is so good. And Chris Evans is so, he's blazing. He's, he is so hot. So um, if you get Apple TV, check out Defending Jacob. It's a limited series, and it's really, really well done. People, sorry. People are suggesting shows now. Now people are suggesting <laughs> shows. Bring it. I love it. Thank you. Okay, and yes, the mosquitoes are coming out, so I think we'll yeah. head on in.
All right, so in closing, uh, we're going to be wrapping it up at the neighbors, and then I'm going to be planting. I'm going to be doing some pots, not pot. This is not 420, but I'm <laughs> going to be planting some of Susan Ox gorgeous okay. pots and making suggestions for you on how to stage and how to choose your plants for the pots and so on and so forth. So we're going to do some pots. Then hopefully we can rework that area of the garden that I just opened up over by the trash cans. Uh, we are also going to go out uh, and do a maintenance. This is in Chula Vista where we live. It'll be um, done very respectfully and very safely. Uh, and that's kind of how we want to ease back in is just doing some local maintenance with just our quarantine unit basically and see how that goes. Okay, one last thing. Eduardo is watching you from the U.S. military base in South Korea right now. Wow. Woo! Eduardo, God bless and thank you so, so much. Okay. Bye, everyone. What a great way to end the show. You guys take <laughs> care. Have a really, really great night. Go catch some quality television, and we will see you on the flippity. On the flippity. That's right. <laughs> Bye, everybody.